It would seem that the fairest blessings have been granted to the most distant nations of the world, whereas in Hellas the seasons have by much the kindliest temperature. As I have lately said, India lies at the world's most distant eastern limit, and in India all living creatures, four-footed and flying, are by much bigger than those of other lands, except the horses, which are smaller than the median horses, called Nisayan. Moreover, the gold there, whether dug from the earth or brought down by rivers, or got as I have shown, is very abundant. There too grows on wild trees wool, more beautiful and excellent than the wool of sheep. These trees supply the Indians with clothing. Again, Arabia is the most distant to the south of all inhabited countries, and this is the only country which yields frankincense and myrrh and cassia and cinnamon and gum mastiche. All these but myrrh are difficult for the Arabians to get. They gather frankincense by burning that storax which Phoenicians carry to Hellas. This they burn, and so get the frankincense, for the spice-bearing trees are guarded by small winged snakes of varied colour, many round each tree. These are the snakes that attack Egypt. Nothing save the smoke of storax will drive them away from the trees. The Arabians also say that the whole country would be full of these snakes, were it not with them, as I have heard, that it is with vipers. It would seem that the wisdom of divine providence, as is but reasonable, has made all creatures prolific that are cowardly and fit to eat, that they be not minished from off the earth by devouring, whereas but few young are born to creatures cruel and baneful. The hare is so prolific, for that it is the prey of every beast of bird and man, alone of all creatures it conceives in pregnancy. Some of the unborn young are hairy, some still naked, while some are still forming in the womb, others are already being chased and killed. But whereas this is so with the hare, the lioness, a very strong and bold beast, bears offspring but once in her life, and then but one cub for the uterus comes out with the cub in the act of birth. This is the reason of it. When the cub first begins to stir in the mother, its claws, much sharper than those of any other creature, tear the uterus, and as it grows, much more does it scratch and tear, so that when the hour of birth is near, seldom is any of the uterus left whole. It is so too with vipers and the winged serpents of Arabia. Were they born in the natural manner of serpents, no life were possible for men. But as it is, when they pair, and the male is in the very act of generation, the female seizes him by the neck, nor lets go her grip till she have devoured him. Thus the male dies, but the female is punished for his death. The young avenge their father, and eat their mother while they are yet within her, nor are they dropped from her till they have devoured her womb. Other snakes that do no harm to men lay eggs and hatch out a vast number of young. The Arabian winged serpents do indeed seem to be many, but it is because, whereas there are vipers in every land, these are all in Arabia, and are nowhere else found. The Arabians get their frankincense, as I have shown, for the winning of cassia. When they weak it, it binds oxides and other skins over all their bodies and faces, leaving only the eyes. Cassia grows in a shallow lake. Round this and in it are encamped certain winged creatures, very like bats, that squeak shrilly and make a stout resistance. These must be kept from the men's eyes, if the cassia is to be plucked. As for cinnamon, they gather it in a fashion even stranger. Where it grows and what kind of land nurtures it, they cannot say, save that it is reported, reasonably enough, to grow in the places where Dionysus was reared. There are great birds, it is said, that take these sticks which the Phoenicians have taught us to call cinnamon and carry them off to nests built of mud on the mountain crags, where no man can approach. The Arabian device for defeating the birds 
is to cut into very large pieces dead oxen and asses and other beasts of burden, then to set these near the eyries, withdrawing themselves far off. The birds then fly down, it is said, and carry the morsels of the beasts up to their nests, which, not being able to bear the weight, break and fall down the mountainside, and then the Arabians come up and gather what they seek. Thus is cinnamon said to be gathered, and so to come to Arabia from other lands. But gum mastiche, which Greeks call ledanon and Arabians ladanon, is yet more strangely produced. Its scent is most sweet, yet nothing smells more evilly than that which produces it, for it is found in the beards of he-goats, forming in them like tree gum. This is used in the making of many perfumes. There is nothing that the Arabians so often burn for fragrance. I have said enough of the spices of Arabia, airs wondrous sweet blow from that land. These then are the most distant parts of the world in Asia and Libya. But where south inclines westward, the part of the world stretching farthest toward the sunset is Ethiopia. Here is great plenty of gold and abundance of elephants, and all woodland trees and ebony, and the people are tallest and fairest and longest lived of all men. These then are the most distant parts of the world in Asia and Libya. But concerning the farthest western parts of Europe, I cannot speak with exactness, for I do not believe there is a river called by foreigners Eridanus issuing into the northern sea whence our amber is said to come, nor have I any knowledge of tin islands whence our tin is brought. The very name of the Eridanus bewrays itself as not a foreign but a Greek name, invented by some poet, nor for all my diligence have I been able to learn from one who has seen it that there is a sea beyond Europe. This only we know, that our tin and amber come from the most distant parts. This is also plain, that to the north of Europe there is by far more gold than elsewhere. In this matter again I cannot with certainty say how the gold is got. Some will have it that one-eyed men called Aramaspians steal it from griffins. But this too I hold incredible, that there can be men in all else like other men, yet having but one eye. Suffice it that it is but reasonable that the most distant parts of the world, as they enclose and wholly surround all other lands, should have those things which we deem best and rarest. <laughs>